Hello, my name is Katie, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today we're going to be doing part two of my 2020 makeup favourite. So I did all base products and all cheek products in the first part and now I'm going to move on to brows, eyes and lips. Okay, so we're going to go straight into brows. There's four brow gels that I will shout out as favourites. So I'll start with the one that I've got on my brows today so that is the LOV Browtitude 2-in-1 Brow Tint. So it comes with a sort of like painty on brow tint kind of thing which I haven't really used to be honest. I like this more so for the gel on the other end which I'm a really big fan of. It's just a very standard kind of neutral brown colour. It's got a perfect one that's just so small it's the ideal shape for me. Doesn't have a lot of excess which is a huge problem I have with brow gels. It's just very natural, very fluffy looking. It's not going to give you thick and spludgy painted on eyebrows. It's just a very natural brow gel. So I am glad that I tried this. This is a really good product from LOV. Two brow gels that I tried very early in the year, like January, February time. So I've got the Max Factor Brow Revival Densifying Brow Mascara. I think this is like kind of empty and dried up now. This probably should just be thrown away at this point. But one I did... But when this was in its prime, I remember very much enjoying it. It's one of those brow gels that's a bit like sort of gluey. It's quite, it can be a bit crispy, which I didn't like at first, but it sort of grew on me. It's just perfect for that very like feathery, very natural brow. Obviously that is quite on trend at the moment. So I think a lot of people would like this because of that. But it's a very just like gluey, feathery, fluffy laminated almost brow look so I think a lot of people would really like this and I did remember really liking it at the beginning of the year so I probably would buy another one because it's max factor so it's not going to be super expensive but yeah if you're into that natural fluffy brow look I would recommend this one I also quite enjoyed this Catrice one from the start of the year too so this is their brow colorist semi-permanent brow mascara I think the only thing that maybe annoyed me a little bit is the wand like it's not a bad one like it's fairly small but it's a bit coney I think I'd rather it just sort of be like flat and it does have it has a tiny bit of excess but not too much the shade works great again it is quite a natural brow gel it's not going to be really harsh or spludgy or thick this is actually quite a good brow gel i do quite like this i'm very picky when it comes to brow gels so one of the more recent brow gels that i brought i got this in november uh the milani Staper brow shaping gel i'm actually quite liking this one so far i feel like this one probably does have a bit more excess than the other ones that i've mentioned but once you do tap it off I feel like it is quite natural looking. It just gives you a little bit of definition, a little bit of colour, a little bit of like filling in of the gaps. Without being too much and being too harsh, again, the shade works great. The one that was a bit like, one that I was a bit sceptical of at first, but I feel like it does work. It does give you kind of a feathery sort of brow. This is obviously a more recent one, so I do feel like I need a little bit more time of it, but just based on what I've used of it so far, I feel like I would throw it in as a favourite. I am quite enjoying it. For micro brow pencils, which I like to use with gels, um, my ultimate favourite, which I've used today, has to be the XX Revolution brow pencil. I love this. It's got a really like soft, like creamy formula, so it just applies super easily. But it's very like natural. It's not like super like harsh and pigmented. It's just natural and soft and just applies like a dream. The shade is just a very standard dark brown colour, probably more on the cooler side. It just looks natural. It just gives you a bit more definition to the brows. This is definitely my favourite from the year and definitely a new overall favourite in my collection. I also quite enjoyed these two. So I've got one from Rimmel, which is the Brow Pro Micro Ultra Fine Precision Pencil. This is a more recent one, as well as the Sleek Micro Fine Brow Pencil, which is also quite a recent one to my collection. But I feel like both of these do a really good job. They're quite natural. They're not quite as creamy as the XX Revolution one, which is why I feel like I prefer that one. It's a bit more, it's a bit more of an easier application. These ones are a bit drier, but they do still work pretty well. They give definition, that they don't come out too harsh. The colours work great. So these are pretty decent micro brow pencils. I have really enjoyed using them. And another one that I'll mention, again, this is very recent to my collection. Just tried it in November, but so far I've enjoyed every time I've used it. The Be Perfect Indestructor Brow Pencil in the shade Charcoal. Again, it's very natural. Very natural. This one is quite soft, I would say. Um, the colour works great. Very cool toned brown. Again, it just does a really good job at giving my brows a bit more definition and just filling in the gaps a little bit more. So that is another really good brow pencil. For liquid liner, there was only really one 
that stood out for me. To be fair, I only tried about two, maybe three throughout the year. But this one I really enjoyed. This is from You Can Be. Um, this is their Precise Definer Liquid Eyeliner. I think it is still available on their website, but I couldn't find it on Amazon or anything anymore. But I will see if I can find the link to this. Hopefully it's not completely discontinued, but it's obviously super cheap and super affordable. And it just, it just applies so easily. I feel like I do struggle with liquid liner a lot. I have obviously used it today for my liquid eyeliner. I feel like, first of all, it's incredibly pigmented, incredibly dramatic black, and it just applies super easily. I've not had any problems with it drying out or like drying out mid-application. I found a lot of felt of eyeliners will sometimes dry out like mid-application and you're just shaking it furiously. But this one is just like so pigmented. And, and like I've had this for like a good, like at least five months now, I think. And it still works like really good. Just as good as when I first got it. So very, very impressed with this. I'm happy I gave this one a go. Definitely a favourite liquid liner. For eyeliner in the waterline, I sort of struggled a bit with this one. There wasn't anything that like blew me away. The one that I've used today is from Kiko. It's their Intense Colour Long Lasting Eyeliner Pencil. I did find when I used it today, it was like a little bit dry, but I do find that it's quite common that if you don't use a cold pencil for a while, and if you've not sharpened it, but usually it fixes itself once you've sharpened it a few times. But I do remember this initially being very creamy, very pigmented. It's shown up pretty well in my waterline. It's very dramatic, as you can see. This one does also last pretty well. So I would, I would shout this out as a favourite, definitely. I've also got a cold liner from Fiera that I feel like performed pretty similarly to the uh, Kiko one, very creamy formula. It's called the Glide On Gel Eyeliner Pencil. Lasted pretty well in the waterline. I did find that both of them do have a problem smudging in my inner corners a bit, but sometimes I just find it's quite hard to avoid with cold eyeliners. Speaking of which, I will also shout out this one from L'Oreal. This is their Les Signature eyeliner it is the black shade which is noir cashmere the kiko and the, the kiko and the fiero one are definitely a bit more like creamy and pigmented i mean this one's absolutely fine it applies fine it's decently pigmented like it, it looks fine but the thing that i particularly like about this one is i found that it didn't smudge in my inner corners much at all and that's something i find very hard to find with cold pencils and the waterline so yeah i will just shout out that one because it's very good at not smudging in the inner corner, which is great. I want to mention the Beauty Bay one as well. I've not tested the wearer of this properly because I keep forgetting to check it at the end of the day. But so far from what I know, I've used it. I really like it. It applies great. It's got good pigmentation. It glides on nicely. It's pretty creamy. But I haven't tested the wearer of this properly yet. So I feel like I'm going to mention it, but it's not a confirmed favourite yet. But I'm enjoying it so far. Mascara, um, the one I've got on today, which is definitely my ultimate favourite out of the ones I'm going to mention, is another LOV product. It's the Love Rose Sculpting Volume Mascara. I have a feeling, again, this might have been discontinued, which is really irritating if it has, because I absolutely adore this mascara. I mean, look at my lashes. Even on my bottom lashes in particular, I think it does a really good job. It's just so thick. It's just so volumizing. I love this mascara. I'm so glad that I tried it. I think it's great. I think it does a fantastic job. And I've had this probably for about like four or five months now. And like the fact that I still got this after the amount of time that it's been in my collection, it definitely was better when it was in its prime. But the fact that I still performed this well after sitting around in my drawers, after sitting around for about like four or five months, I think that's pretty good. Absolutely love this mascara. This is great. One that I tried at the start of the year that I really enjoyed was this one from Revlon. It's the Ultimate All-in-One Mascara. This I remember this just giving great volume, great thickness. I didn't have any smudging or anything with this one either. It's got an interesting one because it's quite short, so I wasn't sure what to make of it, but I feel like it does a really good job. You can get quite an intricate application with it. Yeah, this is a really good mascara. I feel like I would repurchase this at some point in the future. Two more recent ones in my collection, so the Flower Beauty Warrior Princess Mascara and the Maybelline La Sensational, which I have tried in the past before, but it was years ago, and I did rebuy it this year for a one brand Maybelline video. This is a fantastic mascara. Definitely believe the hype. It's really good. I understand why people talk about this so much. It's just it just gives fantastic volume. There's no like sort of like there's no sort of weird like clumpiness or like congealment with it on your lashes. It just applies very evenly and very sort of feathered out. And it just gives fantastic volume. What more can I say? It is a really good mascara, 100% would rebuy it. I mean I already did rebuy it technically, so 
I would buy it again. And this Flower Beauty one, which I have spoken about recently in an updated makeup review, I didn't fall in love with it the first few times I used it, but after a while I feel like, I don't know, something with the formula of it just changed and it got really good, really volumizing, really intense. Again, no smudging or anything weird like that with it. I just feel like this is really good. But if you are gonna get it, I would, you know, maybe, maybe not expect it to perform the best like the first couple of times, but after that, it doesn't really start to get good. That's what my experience of it is anyway. So these four are definitely the best mascaras that I tried this year. Probably would repurchase all of these, to be honest. For eyeshadow, um, I'll start by talking about the one that I've got on my eyes today. I have filmed some little clips of me doing this eye look, but I mean, it's pretty simple. It's nothing particularly special, but it's just an example of a pretty simple glam look you can get at this guy. But this is the L'Oreal I Go Wild Eyeshadow Mega Palette. So it's just this little cute quad. It's got some very like neutral, very warm shades in it. It's got some beautiful shimmers in it. I think the mattes in particular though are my favorites in this palette. They just blend like a dream and they're really pigmented. Just like the perfect sort of neutral, warm neutral like matte shades, absolutely perfect. The shimmers are also pretty damn stunning as well. I do really like the shimmers too. Yeah, this is the sort of color scheme you like. I'd 100% give this a go. It's not too expensive either. But yeah, it's just like a go-to glam palette. I do really like this. I feel like I've had a really good experience when I've used it. If I've still got some pictures in my Dropbox account, I will insert some pictures of eyeshadow looks that I've done with the palettes that I'm gonna mention. So I might put some in of this L'Oreal palette while I'm speaking. So this is another more neutral palette. It's from XX Revolution. This is their Expectation palette. First of all, it has like velvet packaging. That's so extra. The packaging is lovely. I mean, it's probably gonna stain easily, but my makeup's all a mess and I don't really care. But yeah, this is a very sort of like pink toned kind of nude palette, but it's absolutely stunning. The formulas look great. The mattes are great. The shimmers, there's some stunning shimmers in here. It's obviously got like this creamy, so it's obviously got like a creamy white shade and a matte black in it, which I feel like is essential for these sorts of palettes, so I love that. It's just a very sort of dusky, pinky kind of palette. Absolutely loved it. I feel like I got some pretty good looks with this. Again, it's quite a go-to glam sort of thing. I would 100% use this for night out looks. Don't remember the price off the top of my head, but it's Revolution, so it wasn't like an arm and a leg to buy either. And the formula was just really good. Really enjoyed this. If this is your sort of colour scheme, then 100% give it a go, the formula is very good. I'm pretty impressed by this palette from LOV as well. So this is their Dare to Dare eyeshadow palette. They have this same palette, but like in like three different sort of color variants. I think in particular, the shimmers in this palette stood out to me. There's some absolutely gorgeous shimmers in here. There's whites, there's silvers, you've got this beautiful blue, this beautiful gold. The shimmers in particular in this palette, I feel like really, really sold it for me. It is a very shimmer heavy palette though. That was my one sort of issue with it, but there is some like sort of neutral like matte shades down here that work super well they blended into each other super nicely again i will put some looks i got from this palette i'm honest i did really enjoy this and definitely include it as a favorite i really like this palette again very much a go-to glam look but you have got like a few sort of pops of vibrancy with your blue and your bright gold Another one that I will mention, I think I actually got this for Christmas last year, but obviously I'm going to include it this year because I barely got to touch it from the previous year. But this is from BH Cosmetics and this is their Zodiac palette. I believe I got this as a present from my sister and I'm glad that she bought it for me because I actually really liked it. Again, I will insert some pictures of looks that I got with this. But yeah, it's quite a colourful palette, but it's also got like neutral shades in it as well. The shimmers, there's some really stunning shimmers in here. I really like the variant of colours. I like that you can go neutral I like that you can go colorful those are my favorite sorts of palettes generally where you can kind of go neutral and go bright and colorful but yeah the formulas were great from my memory I did briefly watch back my video where I was like doing my updated review on this I think there was one shade which I think was this dark blue here I think I had a few issues blending that but other than that I feel like other than that I feel like all of the shades perform great again you got you got a white a matte white and a matte black perfect I feel like every palette needs to have those yeah, so very happy that my sister brought this for me because I very much enjoyed it. And I've recently discovered that applying eyeshadow with a wet base, yes, that thing that everyone already knew. <laughs> I feel like it applies eyeshadow so much better, so I'd be interested to retry this with a wet base and see if I got like an even better performance. 
But again, it's BH Cosmetics, so it isn't going to be super expensive. It should be like under like £20, I would have thought. But yeah, really good quality. Really liked that. And I will also mention my Patricia Bright palette from Revolution. I played around with this so much because it was when because it was when we first went into lockdown and I was off work for about two months and this was the palette that I had in my rotation. So I did like loads and loads and loads of looks in this. And again, this is one of those palettes where I'm thinking now, if I apply this with a wet base, would I have got even better results with this? I think with some of the more vibrant shades, I probably would have, because I feel like I feel like there were a few shades here and there that I had issues with, but overall I got some absolutely stunning looks with this palette. Again, it's so vibrant, so bright, but then you have got some like neutral shades in there. It's also falling apart, which is fantastic. But yeah, I will just put some images I got, because I remember just getting some really good eyeshadow looks with this so I do think this is actually pretty decent and I would give it a go the only thing is it has got a few press glitters in it it's only like two or three to be fair so it's not like it dominates the palette or anything and I personally just don't really get along with pressed eyeshadow glitters just the personal things other people might but I just find that they never I just find that they always separate on my eyes so that's just a personal thing and there is like two or so shades that have a bit of this like mushy texture like there's a green at the top and a yellow down here and again, I'm not a big fan of that mushy texture. But again, it doesn't dominate the palette. It's just the odd shade. So there are a few shades in here that I didn't get along with so well. But overall, there are some really good shades in here too. And I think the looks speak for themselves. So I feel like I had to include it as a favourite. I'd also just mention these little single eyeshadows from Kiko. Um, so these are their glitter shower eyeshadows. I'd already tried one like last year or the year before. I think it was last year. So I wanted to get a few more shades. And these two in particular, the gold and the silver shade, absolutely stunning, gorgeous you have to get them I did try a darker pink and a green shade however and I didn't think the formula was as good for those two so I'd avoid those get the silver get the gold and also the rose gold color absolutely stunning beautiful eyeshadow pigments moving on to lips it wasn't really a lot here that I fell in love with I definitely say my main favorite though would be this little guy from Revlon so this is their what are you called super lustrous lipstick and it's in the shade Untold Stories, I definitely feel like I want to buy some more shades of this, some other new colours if they have any. But this is like a perfect your lips but better shade for my skin tone. I have got this one on today. It's just a very matte formula which is crucial for me. I just love a matte bullet lip that is actually matte. Because a lot of them say they're matte and they're not matte. Which is annoying but this is super matte, super but then creamy and nice to apply at the same time. Again, if you're the type of person that doesn't really like a matte, like a drier formula, you probably won't like it. But if you're like me and you're all about that matte life, then this is a fantastic little lipstick that's pretty affordable as well. If I can find some other nude shades of this, I will buy some because I am very much enjoying it. The only other things that I can think of to include are actually more recent to my collection. So I have got this one from The Body Shop, which is their, which is just called their matte lipstick. It's in the shade Sienna Rose. I tried this pretty recently. I think I got it in like, I think I got this in October. And I was super impressed with the formula. Again, this is like a true matte. Like again, if you don't like a dry and matte formula, you won't like this. But if that's what you're into, then this is a perfect lipstick. It's so matte. I do just wish they had a bit more shade variety because I think there's only about four or so shades so yeah, I'd prefer like a brown or nude or something with this but I do still like this colour quite a lot but formula wise really impressed with it. I want to shout out these Melt Cosmetic lipsticks um, these I tried in November so very recently I'm not the biggest fan of the shades that I have but formula wise I'm really enjoying them they're super pigmented super opaque definitely more on the matte side definitely. See I've got two shades I've got Tomboy and Old Fashioned and one of them one of them's a dark brown which to be fair I do like like dark brown lipsticks it's just not the sort of thing I wear all the time but I do like the dark brown one I got the shade old fashioned which looks like it's going to be a beautiful brown nude but then as you can see at the top it like color changes and comes out gray on your lips which is weird like why did you ruin a good color by making it gray I mean maybe there's a time and a place for a gray lipstick or like a Halloween look or something but I'm so disappointed about the color but the formula really enjoying and I do quite like my dark brown one. I've tried that and then laid sort of nude shades over it and I feel like that works really well. But yeah, for formula wise I do quite enjoy these Melt Cosmetic Matte Lipsticks. Just not sure about the shades that I picked out. For setting spray, there's nothing I've been blown away by but these two I'd say are my favourite. So I've got the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist which everyone loves. I quite enjoyed it too. I thought it was a nice setting spray, just gives you a tiny bit of dew. Kind of makes you look a little bit less powdery, messes all your base product, meshes all your base products together. It's nice, I like it. I don't think it 
did all the magical things some people claimed it did, but you know. And I also quite enjoyed this one. This is from XX Revolution. This is their Face Fix. Stop the clock, rejuvenating, fixing mist. Smells amazing, smells like coconuts. It is nice when you just spray something in your face, it smells amazing, that's great. It's quite a hydrating sort of spray. I did use it today. Let's put a bit more on. It's just very refreshing. And I just got some of that in my mouth because I started talking. It just feels super refreshing. It feels like you're on a summer holiday because of the smell and everything. And it just adds a little bit of dew, gives you a little bit of life, a little less powdery. It doesn't do anything magical though, but I feel like I'm never gonna find a setting spray that's gonna do anything magical to my skin. I don't think it's possible. But these two are definitely say my favorite setting sprays that I've tried this year. Okay, so that's it. That's all my favorite products from 2020. We definitely found some really good ones. We definitely had some fun with makeup throughout the year. I found some pretty good products. I have tried a little flops, but you know what? I'm not gonna focus on the negative products right now. I was thinking maybe should I do a video like full face on my least favorite products? I might still do that. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, we definitely found some great products this year. Again, I might do a video where I talk about products I want to buy next year, because I did do one of those last year. So yeah, potential videos that may come out soon, we'll see. But that's all I've got to say for this video, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye. <laughs>